part comes together, uh, like your right and left brain playing together, if you will, right? <clears throat> Before I start the presentation, I would like to thank uh, a couple of people, uh, Tracy Fitzgerald and Patrick Vanderheide, uh, for giving me the opportunity to uh, present and share uh, my art, if you will, um, on this platform. And also like to give a shout out to uh, Prashant Sharma, uh, a friend of mine from India, who was a Tableau buddy, uh, who, was look, who, uh, who oversaw some conversations between the Twitter feed and also on the community. And he said, hey, KK, we are talking about the same thing. That's when I, you know, kind of came to the community thing and saw that, you know, and this opened up to present my session. So thanks to him. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, <clears throat> so before, uh, you know, when I was thinking about this presentation, I was thinking how to become a data artist, right? But more and more, I think about it, you know, today using Tableau as a tool, we take this data that's in different formats, different files and different structures, and we convert into this a functional piece of um, art, if you will, if you think in that way, right? It, you know, bar graphs, line graphs, charts that brings value to the business community. It is also an art, but it, you know, it has its own purpose. You have a context around it. You're building to, towards that. <clears throat> but during this process, you know, when you're dragging those color fields or when you're driving, dragging those dimensions and measures onto the tableau, you probably might have come across some of these shapes that doesn't seem right because you're thinking your end goal is to create these charts. But if you really think about that and then start thinking from a creativity perspective, as Patrick just mentioned from curiosity, hmm, does this look something weird or different, right? So if you start scratching that a little bit more, you know, you would discover your own artist. So I'm going to be changing my title instead of becoming one. I think every one of us who is using Tableau or data visualization tools, we are an artist itself. So this is kind of, you know, discovering your own data artist. Um, just to say a couple things about me, my name is KK Mulugu. I work for South Star Energy Services. I manage their data analytics. My background has been in technology, um, in program, built enterprise-wide systems, and I moved into marketing to do e-commerce strategy and to build the data management for the campaign processes. And then eventually, you know, went into managing data analytics and with Tableau, I'm doing a lot of data visualization, helping the business users to give them what they want in an agile, quick fashion. Um, I've been using Tableau, I would say, a little uh, close to a year right now. I think my first three minute win with was on the Christmas Eve last year. I like the product for, um, I mean, simple reasons. It empowers the users to let them do what they want to do, to let them play with the data and analyze the data to get to their end goal. Um, it stretches your curiosity, right? I mean, you know, once you start seeing the things visually in front of you, you even though you just want to get to that final state, you're always thinking, hmm, what's going on here? You know, let me just dig deep into that. So that helps you, and right then and there, you're answering those questions. And I love it because, you know, it made me a data artist, right? Um, so data and art, when did this all started, at least from my perspective? Uh, you know, if you really look at, this is my Google Plus uh, profile page uh, a few months back. And I was thinking about this, you know, I'm, a, I'm a data artist or I'm a data visualization guy, I use data. I should be using better background than just, you know, raindrops and, you know, beautiful landscapes. So um, I play with Chicago 311 data a lot, um, similar to what all of us use, the uh, um, office supply, uh, so super storage data or the uh, copy chain data. So I wanted to show um, and Chicago 311, just to give you a background, uh, it's, a, it's a platform where customers or citizens of Chicago can call in or go to their website, log a complaint that could be, you know, they spotted a rat or a rodent on the street or lights are off or potholes in the city, uh, uh, graffiti removal, all different sites, sites of options they can go and complain. So I, want, I was just analyzing that for my blog and I wanted to see how many complaints were logged within a week and then how many complaints were kind of resolved in the same week. So when I was doing that, it, it ended up, you know, something like this, right? I mean, I just changed the colors, but if you really think about that, you know, if you really start scratching your curiosity and artistic brain, it looks more like there are some mountains and you probably have some reflections in the water, right? Again, it's it's not what my objective was, but it was just, I was thinking, hmm, that, that's interesting. Um, I didn't really do anything with that because, you know, my, my purpose was not to create art at the time, but that was in the process, as we have seen, 
during the process of going from the data to your end goal, if you start thinking, um, what could you do in just a fun way, and there might be some possibilities that will open up. Sure enough, in a few weeks later, um, Tableau announced this destination data vis as art contest for the customer conference uh, in Seattle in September. Um, and they want to be, you know, they want to showcase if there was something unexpected, something fun. And I thought, you know what, maybe I should throw my hat into the ring. So I started, again, you know, playing with uh, 311 data. Um, one of the objectives for this uh, contest was we can only use four colors. Uh, even if you use gradient scale, it cannot be more than four because they were using the dot uh, matrix printer, I, I, I believe, uh, to print it on the T-shirts and the bag. So that was one of the restrictions. Uh, so I started playing with circles uh, using Tableau uh, with Chicago 311 data, and I ended up with this. Uh, it's nothing but a bunch of circles, and picked one circle, made it a little bit larger uh, with, with uh, calculated fields, and I called this Twinkle Twinkle. So I submitted this, and I was not 100% happy. I was like, you know what, maybe I could do a little bit better. Then I don't know how many of you have used polygons. It's one of those things we don't really use on a regular day-to-day -day job. But, you know, when I was exploring one day, I was playing with it, and it gives you this freaky polygon shape. I was thinking maybe there's something that would come out of it, right? So after some playing with that, I ended up with this, and I call this lovebirds. I mean, they just look like birds to me. Uh, but yeah, Tableau buddy Peter Gillick said it's a low swamp, so it could be either one of those. So, uh, so let me just be clear here. This is 85% accidental and only 15% data mining. So I wasn't expecting to create birds from the data. The fact that the data was beautiful enough to, you know, render itself to become birds, so it kind of, you know, helped me to get to my end goal. Then I thought, <clears throat> maybe, you know, this is good too, but I wasn't, you know, still happy, right? It's one of those things you're, you're always constantly looking for something. Then I remembered my, uh, the, the mountain thing that I did for the Google um, Plus uh, profile, then played with the area charts and bar charts, you know, I ended up with this, and I call this have a visible day, like early in the morning kind of thing, right? Here we have a radial bar chart, and I, I would like to thank uh, Dave Hart from Interworks Europe. He, he has a blog about how to create a radial bar chart. Um, I don't know if there's a business purpose, a big thing for it, not, but, you know, it, it fit right into my heart as a son. And as you all know, this is one of the three winners of the contest. I'm happy for that. Um, you know, this is when I said, okay, I'm good with it. I'm done with three. I don't want to do more because we still had a couple more days left. But part of me was saying that maybe I could do something else, I, you know. Uh, it, and then I don't know when you're contemplating between yes and no or do it and don't do it, your conscience come and sit on your shoulders and talk, start talking in your ears. I call them white dude and red dude. So I had the same same feeling too, right? So the white dude says that this all looks good. Good luck, KK, you know, go win this. But my red dude says that, what do you mean? You know, we need to create more. Uh, the white dude, again, challenging the red dude, saying that, why, you know, do you want to compete yourself? And because I know that there are going to be a lot of, you know, tabaholics we call people using Tableau. They might be participating in there, and we don't want any chances. So, you know, red dude wants to win. Um, why well, dude basically, you know, rested the case, said that, and I think we should not create any more. Um, so I went with the white dude, and I said, you know, no more visits. Um, just for the record, the white dude and red dude are my wife and I. So, and I said, okay, I'll go with her. Next day I was at work. I was actually playing with some data uh, for some business project out there doing some survey analytics. I hope it's clear for you to see. I was trying to see, you know, based on a survey channel, you know, how, how many responses we got. When I looked into that, like quarter one was really dull, it's not showing up. So I said, you know, maybe just change the size. So I reversed the size of the quarter. It showed up like this, right? I guess this was truly a project I was working on, not for the artwork. Guess who showed up? You know, it went to, right? And he was like, it looks like a sleeping building. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those, you know, your curiosity, you know, start looking differently in a visual perspective. And I thought, okay, why don't I swap the columns in Tableau Workbook? Sure enough, it looks like a top of Sears Tower or Willis Tower in Chicago. So when I was done with my work, I went back to my, I would call probably my final artwork, played with some shapes and circles. I ended up with this um, because the fact when you start pulling measures onto the shelves, they start with green color. I didn't want to change anything, and it, it looked like an Emerald City, so I submitted this. Um, a lot of friends actually loved this. Even this was my favorite than the landscape art, but, you know, there were a lot of 
participants and contestants. So this one was not part of the top 10, but you know, I, I loved what, what we ended up doing here. Um, so, you know, we have seen the four different things um, as an end product, but you know, end of the day when you're playing with Tableau, you really want to look at how, how to get to that. So we'll, we'll um, show all those artwork that I've done, um, you know, one at a time. So let me just open up my Tableau. So we'll start with the the twinkle twinkle um, web star. What we what we have here. So let's let's start with this. So this is the the end product that you're seeing, right? Uh, when I started, you know, looking at the circles and bubbles. Um, so this is the end product. So let's let's start building that. So what I want to do is that I want to actually drag my date to the column shells, and I want to see how many complaints we received by by the date. So you know, you did that, and then you pulled your number of records. Um, and then I said I want to use the circles shape. So it, you know it looked like there were a lot of complaints in in a particular category. So what I wanted to do is that I actually want to bring in the instead of aggregating them, I want to bring it for every type of the request. So this this looked like in a lot of dots out there. So what I did at that time, just kind of ripped to the side. I went and changed the axis. So, so that I don't have a lot of space on the top or the bottom. So I started from, you know, 100 at the bottom and maybe to, you know, 800, 700 at the top. Right. So now I see, you know, plots have scattered all over the place. So because when I was playing with it, I was thinking that this looks like stars. So I thought maybe I should pick one, one particular element or one particular mark and make it a bigger size and leave everything rest. Right. So I created a, a formula, basically just picking one field and it said if that's the particular data that I'm looking for, if the date, type of the record and the, the date, um, and I made it 1,000, everything else is one, right? So I dragged that to the size shell. Now you see that everything stays at one size and then the moon becomes, you know, a little bit bigger. So it changed the size. Now it's, it's the, you know, it's, it's the moon and stars, so we need to go back to the uh, night sky, right? So go to your format and Make sure that you remove all your grid lines, you hide your headers, and then change your background to black, and then you change your color field to white. That's it, as simple as it is, twinkle, twinkle little star there, right? And again, if you want to you know, play with it, what you could do is that you could just pick, pick, you know, pick a couple of marks from here, uh, pick a couple of marks from there, you could have you know, did another formula, so if you just bubble them up and, uh, enough, so they might just look like clouds, right? Again, you can start stretching your creativity, you know, and, and do more and more things. So that's my uh, first uh, first piece of art. Let's close this. And then let's open up the, uh, the visible day here. And I've used, actually, when I started putting this uh, product together or the artwork, I've used all the data that I had about 3.7 million records but I realized that when I was uploading to the public, it can only take a million records. So I had to cut it down uh, to, to a million records. I think 987,000 records are, are behind this. So let's, uh, let's start building that. And this is the end product that we have here. So let's go build that. So what I have done is that I build the request column, uh, request uh, type of request to the column shell. And then let's put my cheat sheet here. So what I want to do is that it's actually more of a um, get my, I want to see how many complaints that we have logged in by, by week. Remember we saw that Google Plus circle. So I just did by the week and then I saw how many records we have. So this gives you this, you know, amount initial. Okay, I only took 2013 and 2014 data. And then I drag this to the color shell. 
Um, I, I initially had different colors, but I changed them to green. So let's let's go ahead and make them what it would have looked in the beginning. So this this is what I would have had, right? So and then I picked up the area chart. Um, it, it's a stacked area chart. It just goes in the order that you have uh, presented the data in your in your uh, um, in your mark shelf here. So what I have done is that as we know that there are only four colors allowed, so I went back and picked up. And this is after like you know playing back and forth. I just said, okay, maybe I should use a uh, gradient scale of uh, a grayscale. So I just picked up a few different colors. And the reason, I mean, the, the way I, I got to this was, you know, when you look at any pictures out there in the morning or in the sunset or sunrise, you know, you see a little bit darker shade at the bottom and lighter and gets lighter. Uh, and again, since I only have three, four colors, so I just wanted to restrict it to this to three colors um, and then remove the transparency. Now, it looks like mountains to me. Again, we have a couple built in here, so we can go back and say, you know what, I want this to be still light color uh, because your, you know, dark bottom is this. So, that gave, that gave me my, you know, mountains, right? Now, again, you cannot just look the mountains. Whenever you paint it as a kid, you want to have something else. So, I thought maybe I should start putting together some birds or something. So, what I did was that I copied the you know, sum of records to create, you know, dual marks on the shell. But here, I don't want to use area charts. I said maybe I'll use um, shapes. So now every element is aggregated to a, to a shape. But again, I don't want to show all of these. So what I've done is that I went and picked up uh, more shapes that I have, and I found on Google a couple of black birds. Again, I'm trying to be in my color zone. So let's go to this. And I don't need the color. So I went with the shape, but again, I only have a few things here, right? So what I have done is that I want to have a couple different numbers. So I created a formula. All it's trying to do is that it's picking up some numbers. If the sum of records at that um, by week level is greater than 11,500 and less than 13,000, I call it bird one, and there's a bird two for a different uh, data set. Everything else called, you know, XX, right? Because I don't want to, I don't want to make everything as a bird. If I do that, if I do that, then you'll have all birds all over the place. So when you're looking at a picture, you want to have different sizes of the bird. So I, I pull that into the shape here, right? But again, you know, I have more more birds. So I went back into the shape filter, and I said, so I I don't want to you know show all these marks. If I pull them into the you know dual axis. Again, you have all these words, it doesn't make any sense. So I, I went back, either you could filter them out, but if you filter them out, you're actually filtering them on the entire worksheet, so you will lose the data points on the mountain. I, while I was browsing through, I found this neat trick. You, you just click on anything and you can hide it. So now you basically don't see all of them, but you're not even filtering it. So because of the fact that these words are, um, uh, does not have a transparent background, so again, they're you know interfering with my mountains. The way that you can overcome is that you, you can just go to your axis, just change your axis, so make that to be you know 12,000 right, and play with it. So they, they they show up a little bit taller or higher. So once you get to that point, as long as they're not interfering with your mountain shapes to be you know visible enough, then you're done. So when I was done with this, again, you know, we can, you know, format it a little bit to, to get to the point of uh, having the um, clean background and no grid lines. But again, this was not, you know, sufficient at that point. I was thinking, what else I can add? I was thinking I could add sun. I had a few options. Either I could have picked up a shape, like a circle, leave it here, like a round uh, orange ball. But if you remember when a kid draw, when you uh, as a kid drew this uh, sun, you always had some you know spark lines or um, you know rays coming out of it. So I was thinking either I could do it a pie chart, and Mark Jackson has done an amazing job of showing multiple pies together. Uh, but for me, it seems a little bit a lot of work for the, for the for the purpose. So as I mentioned earlier, um, Dave Hart from um, uh, Interworks Europe created this radial bar chart, and I thought this is a great uh, for the purpose that I'm looking for. So basically use this technique. Uh, you can look for Dave Hart uh, radial bar chart. You can find the detailed blog about how he did it. So I created that using uh, the data that I have about abandoned vehicles uh, from the Chicago 311. And then you know, went into the dashboard, pulled my um, 
the mountains again you can you can clean this up don't show the header and then you just pull the sun into the middle so when you do this typically what happens is actually doing the tiles so let's go back and you can click the floating object when you want to pull items you can just pull them right onto a shelf and it's actually floating wherever you want to drag and drop you just put it wherever you know where you are not what you want like um, that's about it that's the um, have a visible day art so you know it's size wise it's a little bit different but you make it 600 that's it that's that's the art number two let's close this let's open up the um, emerald city i'm just saving for my uh, bird art tours and i'll tell you in a second why so this one as uh, as we were uh, i was looking at my work and saying that you know there are some way you can get these building structures so when i went back and i started looking into that so we got the type of request onto the uh, column shell and I got my data to the uh, at the week level, right? So this is now I see all these uh, marks that are coming as the um, as the the can bar chart. So I just said instead of using them, use it as a bar, right? And then I got the number of records onto the color shift. So that's it. Now you just see different shades based on I think because the gradient scale is overlapping with each other. I want to again keep my colors to minimum, so I just said I'll keep these two two colors. And you know you, you can play with the transparency. You can draw some lines around it. Again, it started you know growing on its own thing, but again, it just looks like a block up on the top, right? So what I thought was you know maybe I should make this size differently. So I got this into the size shell and made it more of an year, like a discrete year. And if you really look into that, it, it's it's doing what you're so what you're asking it to do, but it's upside down. So you can go back into the edit sizes, you reverse it. There you go. That looks like the building, right? So I thought maybe, hmm, this is interesting. So instead of having all of them, I said maybe I should just take one building. So I just picked one and created my first building. So again, you know, when you're looking at a landscape in the city, it's more than one building, right? So you, I just copied it. And then instead of using year, I said maybe I should do a quarter. So now it's, it's changing the way that you have put your um, um, data element on the size shelf now it's looking at four quarters like quarter one is this big one second third fourth once you start looking into that you know you can think about you know how about you create 30 of them right so it's it's i'm sure it's like one of the buildings out there right you can do the the day you know it's like you have uh, seven uh, you have 30 days in the month you know you can do that or you can pick an hour or a minute or anything you want because it's just giving you that much granularity in the data right so i keep adding to this and I was thinking maybe I should use different shape. I said I'll use circles, right? You know, this again doesn't seem right to me, but I said maybe if I go back to my quarter, this looks like another building. The fact that you have uh, quarters and two different years, uh, I went back and I want to filter it and just want to keep one year, that I'll keep 2013. There you go, that's another building. So you copy another shape and you go back and you know pick another element then i was thinking maybe i should start playing with the shape so this is one of the buildings that i came up with but you can you can do star you know you can do uh, uh, plus or you know multiplication any symbol that you want you can even load multiple shapes each and every one of them start coming you know into play as a different different element some places i actually you know left two of them on the shelf you see and then you know I just basically deleted, uh, you know, deleted some of them here so that I don't need to worry about them uh, to showing up. So now it becomes shorter. So doing all this artwork with little different shapes and then, you know, go to the dashboard and basically what I've done is that pick, a, pick up each and every, it's in a tile format, we don't want that. Let's do a tile and, and start adding my buildings and start removing this. Uh, you could either use tile or you could either use the floating object And then you picked up another one, keep adding. Picked up another one, keep adding, right? Again, you can add as many as possible, um, you know, to this. So ended up adding different shapes to, to this uh, dashboard. And, you know, this, this was the, uh, the final art that, that came out of the, um, of the uh, Emerald City. So every, every 
uh, element in here is a worksheet onto onto this dashboard um, in a, with different shapes. And again, I don't want to leave the um, the city just all by itself. So I I leveraged the fun that I had um, to you know to create the complete art. So that's my art number three. The um, the reason I saved my visas arts or the love words to the end, as you remember, I mentioned earlier that um, this was 85% accidental, 15% uh, uh, data merging. So it's a little bit hard to repeat the exact same accidents. So I re-engineered that so that you know I can present it today, and hopefully we'll get to get to those words. So just bear with me here. So once this gets loaded. So when, when you are um, using uh, polygons, most of the time you use polygons to like you know define a shape or the you know geo map mapping, uh, but it's always you have to really understand what's going on behind that, right? So I was this was a random play. There was there's no rhyme or reason. What I was trying to do is crazily dragging these dimensions and measures onto different shelves. Uh, but again, you know, because I re-engineered that, I'm trying to see um, do what I'm what I'm what I've done. So at least uh, um, at least we can we can get to the get to the point here. So I pull the uh, type of request onto the column shelf and pull the number of records onto my row shelf. Right. So this is basically what it saw. So then I said, well, maybe I should do polygon. Again, this is what I was talking earlier that you always see these funky shapes uh, during the. The Chicago 311 analysis. I was looking at, and I want to see how many records were open, how many records were closed, so that I could do that uh, top and bottom uh, mountain image that you have seen on my Google Circle. So I had this formula on my shelf. I said maybe I should just drop this onto my column shelf, and then you know cut this into the color shelf. Right? Again, it's it's every time I do this, it's it's uh, it's taken up a different shape. Uh, and I was trying to see if I can maybe try to bring the you know year. Um, to the uh, to the path shelf, and again, don't ask me why I did this, but you know this is what I was doing. So now it's kind of you know broken down at the year level and trying to connect those all polygons together. So, and I was thinking this looks like something you know uh, uh, where I want to be or where you know where uh, kind of an artwork that I can submit to Tableau. So when you really look at this orange line and if you you know um, look at this data, it's nothing but six uh, five lines of graffiti removal data by year. Aggregated with you know the open status that had one and zero, right? So if you really look into that, the fact that um, the fact that it's coming all the way here because this has this long data set. So I thought maybe if I just bring this data closer, or, or better yet, you know, let's let's remove this. When I did that, you know, I can expand this underlying data set. So I thought maybe I should just bring this closer. So what I did that in that same formula. I have my cheat sheet here. I went back and said, okay, you know, if it's a graffiti removal, um, make it like, you know, two tenths of what the value is and everything else, you know, keep it same, right? Because I just want to bring that closer with the other one. So when I apply it, I mean, all of a sudden, to my surprise, I was really amazed to see what, what it ended up. Uh, it was not my intention. But it looked like to me like, you know, maybe like a bird, right? Uh, uh, in, a, in a way, it's like in the body of the bird with a long neck and a beak looking backwards. So I was thinking maybe is there a way I can change the bird beak to the front? So again, if you really look at this data, you know, this particular point is at uh, about 5,000 on the open status and about 240,000 around is the this one, right? So 2012, I know this is the data that's actually making this you know this particular mark on on the shelf. So I went back and modified the uh, formula that I had, and and so the same thing. What I did was that okay, why don't I include year um, include year to the same uh, condition so that if it's only graffiti removal and 2012, you know, make that uh, in a smaller right. Everything you know leave leave like that. Did that? This is what it ended up. I mean, this was the bird that I was visioning when I was going through the process. So now that I have one bird, I was thinking maybe I should create, you know, one more bird and maybe call it like a low bird. So to to do that, you could just copy the the sum of records. Sorry, on the on the column shelf. So you get these two things, uh, you know, in next to each other. 
So because of the fact that, you know, you see these birds kind of facing each other in the water, or whatever in the picture, so I said maybe I should go back and edit my axis and just reverse it. Now they're facing. But you look at that, they're kind of trying to hit each other. Maybe they're not fighting. So I again edit the axis, change my axis, uh, you know, start from minus 5,000 so that I can get some room. It moves to the left and same thing with this. So I, I change the reference point so that I get some you know, room, right? That looked like you know what what I want. I again went back and formatted it. Remove the grid lines. Um, no more zero lines. And then again, you know, going through the pane window. If you just remove all the marks that you have, you know, it, it ends up with this. So you basically hide the header. That's it. I mean, I mean, we, we were able to create the accident one more time. So that's my love word. So if you really think about this, right? And if you want to do something different, not not just you know this as the love word, what you could what you could have done is well, let's look at the headers again. I and mean, this is just I was thinking yesterday when I was preparing for the presentation. I was thinking maybe I should just keep this axis. Um, you know, maybe just do this way. So now I have two birds going with, behind each other. What about, you know, if you just, you know, copy this and just remove remove one of the birds from the pane. And then I thought maybe if I can edit the X and make it a little bit little bit smaller, right? So instead of starting 63,000, I thought maybe I'll just make it, you know, 120,000. So I'm making my axis bigger so that, you know, the bird will kind of shrink itself, right? So if you keep doing this kind of information and go to the dashboard and think over where do I this? Right? And then you could you could then you know pull this other one that you just created. Um, again, you can go back and change the uh, size of it. I would rather make this more floating. Right. And you know, let me just go back to my sheet four and maybe delete this bird also. So if you if you do this, so you're creating these these birds right now to to the extent that you want. And um, so if you you know think about that, right? Just you know create one bird like big one, and maybe you know another bird behind it, and you know copy these birds into as many as you want. And then go to the dashboard and get your second bird behind, third bird behind it. So what we are doing right now is that again, from an artistic perspective, you're just looking into that and say, hey, you know, this looks like a a, a bird family or you know, a with family or something, right? So you just start, you know, getting to the curiosity of what you can do uh, during this during this process. So uh, that's that's I was just thinking about it yesterday. I thought, hey, you know, if I have some time. I could showcase it. Um, I think we are uh, pretty much done with the, you know, uh, show and tell of the artwork. So in the end, um, you know, the, the purpose of this contest was that the top three winners, uh, people could actually buy those, uh, buy the t-shirts or, or a duffel bag at the conference and they could print um, using this dot matrix printer. So people, were, whenever I was walking by, I saw people who are buying those t-shirts. So it, it felt happy. And if you're one of those who are on the call who bought the t-shirt, thank you. Um, but in addition to that, you know, I've got some, you know, nice feedback uh, in, in the Twitter, Twitter sphere. Uh, Francois Eisenstadt, he's the, you know, product management leader. Uh, he actually loved all the work that I've done. And specifically, he was kind of focusing on this accidental and data munging work. Andy Cutgrave, um, you know, he actually commented on the Emerald City, you know, it was like a very original idea, and he wanted me to blog about it. So if you check my blog, uh, you will see the detailed descriptions on how I uh, built that. Uh, Paul Bonuga, a good friend of mine, you know, his favorite was also the the Emerald City. Um, you know, he and I were thinking maybe this should have been in the top ten. I could have got a you know, sure win, but you know, lucky enough, I I won with the uh, landscape also. Um, more than this, you know, when I was coming from my hotel uh, during the conference in September, or coming from the conference to the uh, hotel um, that night, one of the guys in the cab driving and was saying, KK, I love your landscape art, man. I didn't thank him at the time uh, because he was just zooming through. So if you're on the call, thank you for uh, for your feedback. So I appreciate that. So I think we are coming to an end. 
Um, and if we have enough time for more questions to take. Um, again, you know, as we are getting into this holiday season, you know, my, my creativity kind of looking into that. Same thing what we have just done with the building. Similar thing taking different shapes. This looks like Christmas trees, right? Again, you can build anything you want. So if I'm planning to send a, you know, a, a greeting card, I'm planning not to buy any more of those in the future. So I'll try to use Tableau, you know, to, to, to be creative and make some art. Uh, with that, uh, you know, you can follow me on Twitter. Uh, my handle is here, uh, or you can uh, check my blog post, or you can send me emails to my work email or my you know, personal email. I'll be happy to help you out with that. Thank you. Um, and again, make friends with your red dude and start thinking creative. <laughs> Hello, KK. So that's that's wonderful. Um, I, I we think we have time for some questions. Um, and I know uh, I think Matt Francis is the first one. I'm going to go ahead and unmute him. Um, if anyone else has questions, just go ahead and and uh, post it in, on this on the uh, uh, WebEx, and I'll go ahead and unmute you. So Matt, you're un, you're unmuted right now. Oh, um, KK, that was fantastic. Um, <laughs> I think this is a really good example of one of the true strengths of Tableau that you you essentially started playing with the data and then you discovered you know you were making something that looked artistic and then used your strengths you know in the product and your data skills to actually kind of then go from what was an accident to designing it into something artistic and I think that's really it's a great example of that was just playing with it but it's the same way when you're making any kind of analysis or dashboard that you start off with just playing with the data. So that was, you know, it's a really great, um, it's a fun thing, but the skills that you've got in doing that just translate to um, your work. Um, the one question I did have was, I didn't catch the reason why, but the data set that you used, was that just one that you happened to be working with at the time and it was just a random set that you had, or did you pick it particularly because it was um, any particular um, reason for picking it? No, no, thanks it. for your comments on that. Uh, the uh, the reason I was using the data set, as I was saying, I use uh, Chicago 311 data. It has about three plus million records in it, and it has a lot of variability. So whenever I'm learning something about Tableau, uh, either, you know, trying to use shapes or objects, I use the data in addition to our, uh, you know, superstore or the copy chain. So the fact that I have so many data points, I thought, I'll just play with it, but again, it was not the intent or the purpose of the data, but it happened to kind of led me into this artistic uh, way of creating examples with that. And and one thing you kind of nailed there, uh, 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 Matt, that you know, more than often nowadays I say that I'm playing with Tableau. I'm not using the word like I'm working with Tableau because end of the day you're trying to get to the end value based on the context that you're trying to solve. You know, it's, and I think you know people in, in, in the content, they were saying it's almost like playing like a video game, you know, right? Because you're mm -hmm. trying to, you're seeing something visual, it's it's intriguing and it's you know, asking you more questions and you're trying to solve the business problem, but it's, it's making more fun uh, during the process. You know, it, it could get frustrated, but you know, end of the day, it has the power and the tools and techniques that you know, easily you can get to the end goal and, and be proud of it end of the day. Absolutely. Yeah, KK. I just I, I know that uh, for me too. It's the the the, the creativity of the software is, uh, amazes it amazes me as an employee, but amazes me when we're uh, as we're trying to do things here and and uh, our creation of dashboards and work. Uh, uh, thinking about it as a uh, as a creation project uh, or product um, sometimes kind of uh, uh, twist things. I, I often tell people to think of it more as a, as like Microsoft Paint rather than rather than uh, than uh, coming at it from a, a view of a of a data structure and um, you know think about the, the creativity aspect of the software. Um, okay, um, I don't see any other questions. I'm going to go ahead and just unmute everyone uh, for a moment, and this will give us an opportunity just to give a little round of applause. And if there's any last questions, they can speak up real quick. Um, and I would like to just add to that, Patrick, one thing that, you know, if you, if you have an opportunity, go look for Tableau Wizards Art, and there were 10 finalists in there. And <clears throat> there are some amazing things that you could see how people have it done. Yeah, 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 but again, the problem was there. Start. Let's go ahead and give a round of applause. Okay, thank you. 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 Yeah. And KK, with that, I'm going to go ahead and shut it down.
ನನಗೆ